And it's not just about the diabetes. And so obviously we say, well, you consume the seed oils, you know, you, you get a little bit of sugar in your urine. Is it really that much of a problem? So you'd be familiar with the Sydney Diet Heart Study. So this was actually uh, ran between 1966 and 1973 from memory, approximately those years. And they actually uh, recruited males who had had heart attacks. So the population you would consider very, very high at risk. And then they randomised them to either go on a, a standard diet of keep on having what you were having, which was saturated fat, rich foods, no doubt, or to take out the saturated fats in their diet and replace it with seed oils. And what they actually found was that the males who consumed the seed oils actually had an increased death rate of 62%, hugely significant increase in death rate. So it's not just some kind of esoteric or abstract concept we're talking about, we'll say, you know, well, you you know, consume seed oils and you absorb this oxidative stress and, you know, it might make these metrics bad. The final outcome that we really care about, which is good health and longevity, that is significantly impaired. And I won't bore everybody with other um, studies. I'm sure as you've heard me talking on this subject before, you've probably heard me talk about it ad nauseum. Um, but there is a couple of other points that we do need to talk about. Um, one of them being that if you are a diabetic, then the oxidation from seed oils is far more damaging to you than a non-diabetic. So they did this really elegant study where they had subjects actually consume oxidised oil and then they measured their blood to see how long they had these circulating free radicals in their blood for and understand that these free radicals, when they're circulating, they're not benign. They're doing bad stuff. They're damaging. And they found that people, diabetics with good control of their sugars or non-diabetics, they could detect these free radicals for eight hours on average. Poorly controlled diabetics, care to hazard a guess, Nicole or Peter, how long they lasted for? Well, twice that? Nine times longer, 72 Nine hours times. longer. So the persistence of these free radicals in the circulation doing damage um, that was measurable following consumption of a seed oil was eight hours versus three days. So just consider that for a moment. So, again, this is not some esoteric abstract construct that is irrelevant to diabetes. It is incredibly relevant. And this goes to the heart of what you talk about, Peter. You talk about real food. So it's not just about, you know, this macronutrient or that macronutrient. It's about having the combination or avoiding the combination of ingredients that are found in industrially produced foods. And obviously that includes sugars, you know, carbohydrates coming in under that umbrella and seed oil. So it's a deadly combination. It's not one or the other in isolation. You mentioned how they might, seed oils might actually affect appetite and, you know, this is something that a lot of people don't know about. There's a term of something called nutritional immunity. And what it actually means is that our immune systems have got a fantastic strategy where our bodies understand that pathogens that will infect us, things like viruses and bacteria, different parasites, they rely on iron to survive. And as far as they're concerned, we're a smorgasbord. We've got iron circulating around in our blood, ready to go. Now, with our immune system, when we get an inflammation trigger, our body does its best to take that iron out of our free circulation and push it into storage. So what we call our serum iron, which is the, the free iron in our blood, will actually go down, and the iron in our storage reservoirs called ferritin will actually go up and that has a very a beautiful effect because it effectively starves these pathogens of the iron they need and our immune systems can go on and do their business and eradicate the infection and then once the infection's gone that inflammatory signal from the infection is removed and the iron level is restored back to normal in our blood the trouble is when we have inflammation 
from artificial causes, things like seed oils, which we know are inflammatory, well, we don't ever get any respite from this concept of nutritional immunity. It means that the level of circulating iron is always going to be lower. It's not going to be transient lower for a week or two. It's going to be lower for as long as you're inflamed. And if you've got chronic disease, that can be months and years at a time. And this has very real consequences. And one of them is actually on binge eating, believe it or not. So the chemicals in our brain that make us feel good. So human survival is predicated on two behaviours, procreation and eating. And they're driven by these chemicals in our brain called the catecholaminergic neurotransmitters, so dopamine and serotonin. And they both have an iron-dependent synthesis. In plain English, we need iron to make these chemicals. And without having sufficient iron, as in if in an inflamed state, our production of these chemicals is going to be suppressed. And this is absolutely provable biochemistry 101. Now, if we have less of these chemicals and understand that we've got the, we're hardwired, we have this physiological drive to chase these chemicals, remember the behaviours of eating and procreation are actually driven by these chemicals. That's how the, the human brain is hardwired. So without these chemicals, we have an urge to engage in behaviours that will actually lift that grey veil, if you will, of apathy from us and actually give us a squirt of these chemicals into our brain. And what's the most reliable way of doing that in our modern society? Junk food. It's ready, it's always accessible, and it's been crafted to have what we call the bliss point, which is basically to make it as appealing and addictive as possible to squirt these chemicals back in. So we end up in a situation where we become chronically inflamed we actually have suppression of our body's ability to synthesize dopamine and serotonin, and that then sets us up to have these cravings.